Welcome back to Movie Mo Show. Today we are going to review the mystery drama film, Mirror Mirror. If you like our content, don't forget to like and subscribe. We post multiple times daily. Spoilers ahead. The Queen, Julia Roberts, introduces the animation part by telling us the tale of Snow White's birth while using snarky remarks in contemporary language. Mother passed away. She was indulged, and everything in the kingdom was wonderful. When he first met the queen, her father was preparing her for the kingdom. They were wed, but he had to leave. He gave Snow his dagger before riding into the woods and disappearing. Devastated that he hadn't been discovered, Snow White went in search of him. She is now at the queen's mercy. The present. Snow White, Lily Collins, ten years after the king departed in the dark woods without a trace, converses and interacts with the birds. She's never ventured beyond the castle. Music can be heard downstairs. The queen is seated on her throne, employing her attendants as human pieces in what appears to be a game of chess that she is playing with her senior minister, the Barton, Michael Lerner. She is informed by a servant named Brighton, Nathan Lane, that the kingdom is on the verge of starvation. As it is her 18th birthday, Snow White emerges from the bedroom she appears to reside in to ask the queen if she may attend the banquet. While acknowledging that Snow done nothing wrong, the queen gives it some thought. Snow is just so annoying, though. She had better never sneak down again, regardless of if it was her 100th birthday. Go to the forest. Two men are talking while riding their horses and discussing the adventure they have been on for several months. The guys are Charles Renbach, the butler of Prince Alcott, Army Hammer, and Robert Ems. A group of masked bandits on stilts assault them with swords as they are taking a break. The discovery that they are dwarfs makes the two men giggle. Because it would be far too amusing to oppose them, their stilts collapse like accordions. But the dwarfs steal their gold because they are chasing it. The staff of the palace assists Snow White in celebrating her 18th birthday. One woman, Baker Margaret, Mare Winningham, raises her hand and tells her that she has remained here all these years because she believes she will one day retake the kingdom. She presents Snow White with the dagger that she received as a gift from her father years ago. Following the servant's encouragement, Snow White decides to leave the palace, and as she does, the guards wonder whether she is really permitted to do so. Suddenly, we hear the Queen Mirror utter those well-known words. She enters the mirror on the wall, which is different. When she exits, she is at a different location in another dimension, where she is living in a tiny cabin on a huge lake. She discusses being married to the Baron with a reflection of herself. The mirror advises her to wed a wealthy man since she'll eventually wonder who is the fairest of them all. Snow White encounters the two men as she is strolling through the snow-covered woods, they are now only wearing their underwear and are hanging upside down from a tree. She makes the choice to free them. Prince Alcott, the one man she almost immediately feels a connection with, turns down their invitation to travel with. Prince Alcott and Charles, who are both still only half-clothed in their underwear, disturb the queen while she is trying for shoes at the palace. The queen hurriedly plans a ball to please him because she has never heard of his kingdom. Brighton reminds her that they do not have the funds to finance her desire to wed the prince. However, she disregards the fact that people are starving and will do anything to throw the ball. While exploring the village's streets, Snow White encounters people and children pleading for food and alms. She is surprised because the town looked different when she last visited there as a child with her father. When Brighton enters the city, he posts a sign announcing increased tax collection. He informs them that despite their poverty, they must pay since the money is being used to keep a terrifying beast away from them. Prince Alcott is forewarned by his friend Charles that the Queen is suspect, but he still departs. Snow returns angry and laments the state of the people, informing Baker Margaret. She tells her about the ball and promises to crash it in order to save the kingdom. A little while later, we find the Queen getting ready while being treated by Baker Margaret, who is abusing her without the Queen's knowledge because she has her eyes covered. Insects like bees, snakes, and other creatures can be placed on her. The costume ball kicks off that evening. Snow White crashes the ball in the disguise of a white swan, surprising both the prince and herself by appearing. The queen is watching them as they dance together. He claims to be the prince after she acknowledges that she is a princess. They lie during the dance so they won't have to change partners and can carry on a conversation, which obviously irritates the queen. Snow tries to explain to Alcott what is going on and why she needs his assistance, but when she is watched by the queen, she makes an attempt to flee before she seizes her. While Snow White rants at the Queen about the problems in the hamlet, the Queen corners Snow White and asks her where she acquired the dress. When Snow White asserts her authority as the kingdom's legitimate ruler, the camera pans in on the Queen's necklace made of celestial objects. Later, the Queen informs Brighton that Snow White must be slain and should be taken to the woods to be fed to the beast. Brighton has now carried Snow White to the woods while still wearing her white swan outfit. While the snow is falling, 
they hear the beast and are both terribly upset. Brighton releases the cords holding her hands together and instructs her to run, still feeling grateful for her father's kindness in treating him well. Running through the trees, she crashes into a sign that reads no entry. Inside the home of the seven dwarfs, she awakens. Although she claims to be Snow White, not all of them accept her claim. She reveals how the queen sought to have her killed and informs them that she has no gold to give them. They are hesitant to let her stay because doing so could result in their deaths. They choose to let her spend one night there. The dwarfs, played by Martin Kleba, Sebastian Saraceno as Wolf, Mark Povinelli as Half Pint, Danny Woodburn as Grimm, Ronald Lee Clark as Chuckles, Joe Nafo as Grub, and Jordan Prentice as Napoleon, introduce themselves. While running back to the castle, Brighton tells the Queen of Fib that the work has been completed. He displays to her a bag of what appears to be her organs but is actually food. The death of Snow White has delighted the Queen. Brighton informs the maids, and the Queen and he display very little emotion. The new taxes are being collected in Brighton. The magistrate informs him that the locals' financial difficulties are getting out of hand. Brighton is not only taking some of the money with him, but the dwarfs are also pursuing him as he makes his way back to the castle through the woods. They take his gold, stow their costumes, and depart for their residence. They want Snow White to stay longer because she made a delicious dinner for them. She confronts them about the gold and informs them of how much the people need the cash. They inform her that the queen banished them from the village long ago because they were undesirables. Snow White takes the riches and flees, with them following slowly behind her as they begin to dispute over their previous lives. She delivers it to the municipal judge. The dwarfs burst through the door as Snow White is about to call her name. She informs the villagers that they should be thanked because they were responsible for making it happen. The queen is having dinner with Prince Alcott at the palace, and it's clear that he thinks she's a little strange. He admits that Snow White is the most beautiful girl he has ever seen as she tries to get to know him. He is visibly disturbed when she informs him that she passed away the previous night in the woods. When Brighton enters, in his underwear, the queen is going to propose to him. He tells her that thieves stole the tax money. Having already been robbed by them, Prince Alcott storms outside to engage in combat. Snow White can stay with them, but she must follow some conditions, the dwarfs say. Snow White agrees that she must become a robber as long as they return the money they take from the queen to the populace. They start by explaining to her all of their tricks, including how to use their costumes and engage in sword combat. She rapidly picks up on their techniques over the following few days and becomes an excellent thief alongside them. The location in the woods where Prince Alcott was previously attacked has now been reached by Prince Alcott and a few men. Before Snow White realizes it is him, he spots her acting lost so she may attack and steal from them. The conflict between her and the prince, as well as the dwarfs and the men, starts as she draws her sword. Everyone soon witnesses Snow and Alcott fighting, and she prevails. Half-naked, he returns to the castle once more. He reveals that Snow White is still alive by telling the queen that she was the outlaw's commander. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.